Physicalism is the philosophical view that everything is physical. That is, all things consist entirely of their physical properties and nothing more. And there is no sort of non-physical realm beyond or in addition to the physical world. The physical world and its physical attributes are all that there is. I consider physicalism to be a reasonable position. It is a very conservative, almost scientific view. It makes no assumptions and it only works from what we know. That is, that the world is physical and things have physical properties. Many people disagree with physicalism. They posit that there are in fact certain non-physical properties that things can have in addition to their physical properties, or that there is some kind of non-physical realm alongside the physical universe. Yet none of these claims have ever been shown to be true, and we have no verifiable reason to believe that these non-physical properties or worlds exist. If we did, then it would make sense to accept that these additional properties do exist, but because we do not, it makes no sense to assume that they exist in the absence of any evidence. Whereas we can be reasonably certain that the physical world and its physical properties do exist. Now, physicalism has some very interesting implications pertaining to philosophy of mind, a field which explores what the mind is made of and what it does. Under physicalism, everything is physical, and that includes our minds. Our consciousness, our awareness, our thoughts, all of this is physical. Their physical basis is the brain. The moment-to-moment -moment awareness that we experience is a direct result of the functioning of the brain, the electrochemical communication that takes place across the trillions of synapses linking billions of neurons. These parts are composed entirely of matter and energy in the physical world, and what they sum up to is the whole, and the whole is our consciousness. And so we, our minds, are firmly grounded in the physical world. The mind is synonymous with the brain. There are no non-physical components to our consciousness that we know of. And some people disagree with this. They insist that consciousness is so special, it must be made of something different, something beyond the physical world. Many of them propose that our consciousness will persist and go somewhere else, even after our brains and bodies die and decay. Others go so far as to say that our consciousness can temporarily exit from our bodies and then return while we're still alive. Sometimes this is claimed to be the result of using hallucinogenic drugs, undergoing major surgery, attempting to exercise conscious control of this separation, or even simply falling asleep. Others claim to have such experiences when they've been clinically dead and then revived. I think it's particularly notable that all of these alleged experiences result from entirely physical causes. Drug use, deep anesthesia, sleep, and actual death and resuscitation. The brain is influenced by a fun new chemical, or the onset of sleep, or being temporarily deprived of oxygen. Moreover, there has never been a recorded and verifiable instance of a person, say, obtaining certain information via removing their consciousness from their body that they would not have been able to obtain had they not done so. Some philosophers take a more conservative view of this. Rather than proposing the possibility of consciousness being liberated from the brain and persisting after irreversible death, they seek to strike a compromise that links the mind to the brain while still insisting that the mind and the brain are made of two fundamentally different kinds of stuff. The body and the brain are made of physical material, but the mind is immaterial and made of something else. This view is known as dualism. Now, dualism does have an inherent appeal to most people. It often seems quite intuitive to view your own consciousness as something distinct and separate from the rest of the physical world. But our intuitions and so-called common sense are not infallible. They can misfire, and so the question becomes, is there any validity to dualism? Now, dualism comes in several varieties mainly differentiated by the causation that they propose takes place between the physical world and the mind. One type, known as occasionalism, holds that nothing causes anything. That is, physical events don't cause physical events or mental events, and mental events don't cause mental or physical events. 
Instead, everything, mental and physical, is directly caused by some kind of deity. Occasionalism has been largely abandoned and is really of historical interest only. Closely related to occasionalism is parallelism, which proposes that physical events only cause physical events, and mental events only cause mental events. They either just so happen to precisely correlate so that there appears to be some kind of causation going on between the physical and mental, or a deity has intentionally made them line up just so. Parallelism has also fallen out of favor. Really, it didn't enjoy much favor to begin with. Next, we have interactionism, which finally allows for a bit of interaction between physical and mental events. Interactionism contends that physical events cause mental events, and mental events in turn cause physical events, and so on, just bouncing back and forth. For example, you might touch something that's burning hot. This physical event causes your mind to perceive pain, and this mental perception of pain causes you to physically pull your hand away. And this does hold a great deal of intuitive appeal to us. It just makes sense, or at least it seems to. But problems began to crop up when we realized that our neurons do not just fire out of nowhere due to some invisible, immaterial, and unobservable mental cause. When our neurons fire, it is always due to a physical cause of some sort. There is always physical accountability there. These things don't just happen for no apparent reason whatsoever. And so we now end up at epiphenomenalism, the view that physical events cause both physical and mental events, whereas mental events do nothing at all. They're just a byproduct, and so they're really unnecessary. Epiphenomenalism makes itself compatible with the physical world by acknowledging that physical events have physical causes. In fact, if you took the mental events away, it would make no physical difference. From a standpoint of observation, everything would proceed exactly as it did before. This is actually a big problem. Insisting that mental events still be something separate from physical events comes at the cost of relegating mental events to causal impotence.